Hey there tech fans, Rick here again with another review. And today, I have the Roku Stream Bar. This is a brand new product from Roku that combines all the functionality from a Roku streaming media player with a high performance sound bar. So with a single connection between this product and your widescreen TV, you'll not only be able to stream all of your content in 4K quality, but you'll instantly upgrade your audio to theater quality sound. Now before I get too deep into the review and point out all the cool things this stream bar can do, I thought I'd start with an unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and that way you'll understand exactly what you get if you buy the product. And then I'll go through the features, because what Roku's built here is a streaming media player, tremendous, and a sound bar, tremendous, in a single unit. And normally when you're connecting up those two devices, you've got to connect up your streaming media player and that involves cables and standards and all kinds of configuration steps. And if you get that working and decide you want to add a sound bar, now you've got more cables and configurations and compatibility issues, and it could be tricky to get it all working together. With this one, a single connection from this product to your widescreen TV, and you're off and running. So it's incredibly easy to use and produces phenomenal sound as well. And I'll get into all that. And then I'll actually take a closer look at the unit because Roku's also built in a lot of advanced functionality into the soundbar. One feature that I like an awful lot is the ARC and EARC compatibility. That's something you don't find on a lot of soundbars. And if you've got some uh, modern media equipment, some high-end gear, you'll understand what that means. But ARC, essentially, it stands for audio return channel, and it allows you to pass audio from your monitor back to a soundbar through that single HDMI cable, again, which greatly simplifies the wiring. So this is built for that. A lot of other soundbars don't have that. So I want to show you how to use this product so you'll understand how to use it once you get it home. And then finally, I'll come back and point out a few things that I really like about this soundbar, because I test a lot of soundbars. I've got soundbars all over the house, and I was surprised because I saw the size of it and I thought, okay, it's a Roku, that's kind of cool. How good could the audio be? Well, the audio is really good on this one, and there's some features beyond just the soundbar that you can incorporate, and I'll get into all that. But let's get started with the unboxing first so I can get into the good stuff. All right, so when you first pop open the box, you'll find the stream bar. You'll find a power supply with a nice long cord. So the cord is long, the cord between the power supply and the stream bar is long. You can plug this across the room almost and have plenty of cord to uh, turn this guy on to plug it in. So you get that power supply. You also get a full functional remote. This is a standard Roku remote. So if you're used to using the Roku products, you'll be very familiar with the remote. They even include batteries. There's a couple of AAA batteries there. So again, everything you need to get started is included with the kit. Also to connect it up to your widescreen monitor, you have a couple of choices. They've included a high performance HDMI cable, so you can plug it in here, plug it into the ARC or eARC port on your TV, and that's the only connection you'll need. If you have older equipment, you can still use an optical SP diff cable. And again, it's nice they've included that because normally when you get a product like this and you open up the box, you're all excited to get it connected up and start watching a movie or watch a TV show, and you find out, hey, I'm missing an optical SP diff cable. Well, we got to go back to the store and find that cable. So everything you need, again, is here. Included as well is a warranty card and a full instruction manual that gives you a lot of details about how to use the product. So it's got a lot of cool features built in. Let me start talking about those. So if you have never used a Roku product before, there are a couple of different products on the market that'll do media streaming. So if you're watching Netflix or Amazon or Paramount, it seems like all of us are moving to streaming channels nowadays. You'll need some type of streaming media player to, to make that happen. Roku makes one that's been around for a long time. They're one of the first that came out with a streaming media player. And all the channels I just mentioned are available on that streaming media player. So it kind of organizes everything in one place for you. So you can flip between Amazon or if you want to go to Apple TV or whatever, you can use that streaming media player. Well, inside here is all the technology to enable that. So you've got a full functioning Roku 4K media streamer inside the unit, and you've got the remote to control it. So you don't have to worry about having an external box. Everything is built into the unit. Now, as far as the sound bar goes, it's an incredibly powerful sound bar. It's got a four speaker system built into it. it. It generates a tremendous amount of sound and it's not just louder, it's better. And what I mean by that is most of the TVs you're using today are incredibly thin. It seems like flat panel companies have really strived to get to a point where they're wafer thin <laughs> TVs. And the problem with having a TV this thin is that the speaker can't generate a lot of sound because honestly, the acoustics, the physics behind the acoustics requires a cavity for it to generate that bass. And that's what you lose typically with the TVs. You'll hear high end frequencies pretty well. You'll hear speech pretty well, but you'll miss that bass. This provides that bass. So this gives you that full rich, sound, that full frequency response. You can hear dialogue, you can hear bullets whizzing by you, you can hear trucks rumbling behind you. All of that comes through the soundbar. In addition to that, they offer wireless, subwoofer, 
and another set of wireless speakers that connect up to this so you can create a 5-1 surround system in your home where you've got a subwoofer and you've got two more speakers behind you. So it gives you a lot of functionality that you can expand beyond this if you choose to do that. I'm using the soundbar as it stands and it's working out just great for me. I don't really need a lot of sound because I'm getting a little older and I'm missing a lot of frequencies because my ears are getting older as well. But if you're younger and you're looking for that, you know, that amazing theater quality sound, maybe add the subwoofer and add a couple of speakers to it as well. And those connect up wirelessly. So there's no more wires to fiddle with. You just connect them up through the application and you're good to go. All right, so next I'm gonna take a closer look at the unit and point out the connections because even though it's a pretty simple product to install, it's important to understand what connections you'll want to use and what quality audio you'll get from those. I didn't mention too that you can mount this on the wall. So if you decide, I mean, it's small enough where it fits under most TVs. It looks great in pretty much any decor. I like the fact that it's got this, this kind of uh, grill on the front here that's dark. It's got a dark top to it. It looks really good in my environment, but you can mount it on the wall if you decide to do that. So if you stay tuned next, what I'll do is take a closer look at the unit and point out the connections. And then I'll come back and do a demonstration to show you how this works with a TV and how it works with other devices playing through the TV and then returning the audio to the soundbar because again that greatly simplifies things. So stay tuned for the closer look next. The front of the stream bar has this speaker grill material across the entire width of it with the Roku logo in the center. On the bottom it's got a rubberized surface that protects whatever you put it down on. It also keeps it in place and keeps it from sliding around. The top of the unit's got a black textured surface that'll fit into pretty much any decor. And on the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, you'll also find two mounting holes you can use to mount this up off the ground and out of the way if you choose to do that, or you can just set it down on top of your cabinet. As far as the connections go, starting on the left, you'll find a power port. That's used with the included power supply. You'll simply plug that into a wall outlet. You'll plug the barrel connection in right there to provide all the power you'll need for operation. There are two audio connections here, an optical SP diff if you'd like to use that with an older monitor, or a brand new HDMI ARC port Again, if your monitor has an ARC compliant HDMI port, plug a cable in from here to your TV and you'll be in good shape. You want to use a high quality cable as well because that ARC compliance requires the latest HDMI standard cable. To the right of that is a full-sized USB-A port. You can slide a thumb drive in there with audio on it or even video and play that through the soundbar using an application on the Roku. Finally, to the right of that is a reset button. If you need to reset this unit for any reason to factory settings, hold that in for a couple of seconds when it's powered up. It'll actually reset and you can change the configuration. And that's pretty much it for the stream bar. Now I'll do a short demonstration to show you just how cool the stream bar actually is. And for this demo, I've got the stream bar connected up to this TV through a single HDMI cable, plugged into the HDMI port here and the HDMI input port on the back of the TV. But the important thing is that port I'm using is an ARC port, which is really bi-directional. So I can send video and audio to the TV through the HDMI cable, but because it's an audio return channel port, I'm also sending audio back down the cable to the soundbar. So I know it's a little confusing because the Roku's in here, it's gonna send video upstream to the monitor so I can enjoy the content, and it's gonna play the audio through here. So it's a simple connection. Where it gets really interesting though is I've also set up a media player right over there that's streaming a video that I did of some drone flights that I'd had, and there's music in the background, and I've got that on the other HDMI input to the TV. Now that could be a DVD player, or a computer, or a game console, anything else you'll play through your widescreen TV, and the important thing to note is the audio from that is going to actually travel back down this HDMI cable because it's bi-directional into the soundbar. So this becomes your audio output for anything you're watching on the display. So let's start off with the Roku. Now I can't play any of those channels because they're all trademarked and copyrighted, but let me get down to live TV and I'll just pick a news channel just so we've got some audio coming through. It's going to take a second for it to queue up and you'll hear the audio come through here. There we go. And again, I can crank it up. There we go. Oh, this is uh, probably not the best content. But anyway, so you can hear the audio's coming through. Shouldn't be a surprise because the Roku's in here, the audio's playing in here, and we're watching the video on the TV. But here's where it gets interesting. Let me switch to the other input. I'll go down to input number two, HDMI number two, right there. Now, we're gonna see the media from here. There's the audio. So. How cool is that? So I know I'm getting really excited about it, but you have to remember, let me turn that down a little bit. You have to remember that in the past, you would have a sound bar that you had to connect an optical SP diff cable to it or an analog cable or maybe an HDMI 
but it was complicated to switch between them. So you had 14 remotes on your coffee table and you're always looking for the remote to switch your audio. With this soundbar, because it's using that ARC connection, all the audio is being passed through that bi-directional HDMI port down to the soundbar so you can listen to it, again, at theater quality on any media content you're watching on that monitor. And that's one of the cool features that's actually built into the stream bar that you won't find on a lot of other sound bars unless you're looking for one of those really high-end sound bars. So I think Roku's done a fantastic job of combining their streaming media player and their sound bar in one unit with those advanced features like ARC compatibility. I hope that closer look and demonstration were helpful. Now here are a few things that I really like about the Roku Stream Bar that you can use to compare it to other products you may be considering. So for starters, you're gonna end up with a couple of pieces of gear if you're streaming any kind of media in your home today. You're gonna need a streaming media player. So you're thinking, do I go with the Google product? Do I go with the Roku product? Is Apple the product they wanna go with? They all work pretty well. The Roku product's been around probably longer than those other two products. And I like it a lot because they've got every channel you could possibly imagine. They actually have a Drone Valley channel available. We posted a channel up on Roku a couple of years ago and a lot of our content ends up there. But anyway, the Roku product is as good or better than the other ones. And what's really cool about this one is it streams in full 4K ultra high definition resolution. So you're getting the best quality picture on your TV today. And that's built into the unit. The remote's incredibly smart as well. You can jump between channels, you can control your content completely. So I love the remote. It's a really simple unit to use. So from a streaming media perspective, I don't know if there's probably advantages to go with Apple or advantages to go with Google, but at the end of the day, you need a streaming media player. This one does the job and I've been using it ever since it was released. So I like the Roku player a lot. Now, as far as the sound bar goes, the reason I like this one over a lot of other sound bars that I use primarily is because the simplicity of connecting this through that ARC or EARC connection because that means I'm not only sending video to my monitor from this to the monitor to watch my channels, but the audio from that is coming back to the soundbar. And that's kind of straightforward if you're using just this product in streaming, but if you've got other devices, maybe like, I don't know, a game console, if you still have a DVD player around, if you've got a computer, those are gonna connect up to the TV or your monitor, but then how do you get the audio from that monitor to your soundbar? Normally you've gotta connect up an optical SPDIF or an analog connection, there's more cables, you gotta switch between inputs. If you're using the ARC or EARC connection, you don't have to mess with any of that because the TV knows there's a soundbar, it, it, it absorbs the video, or I should say it displays the video from that device, and it'll pass the audio over that HDMI connection to the soundbar. So it tremendously simplifies the wiring, and it gives you the best quality audio you can get through HDMI as well, because it's got a lot of bandwidth to push a lot of that high quality audio through it. So I like that a lot. I also like the fact that they give me an option for SP diff as well, because I could use this as a standalone soundbar through the optical SP diff if I decide to do that. One other key function of this is the fact that there's a USB port on the back of it. I showed you that during the closer look. And you can actually take a thumb drive with either music or video on it, pop it in there, and there's an application on Roku where you can play that called the Media Player, where it can find those files and actually play those on your TV as well. So you've got, in a lot of ways, you've got a streaming media player, you've got a standalone media player that can play content you plug in the back, and you've got a soundbar all in one unit that is tiny. You could almost fit this in your pocket if you had really big pants. But anyway, I like it a lot. I think it's incredibly cool. I really like the ARC and EARC functionality because again, if you're searching for a soundbar, I challenge you to go find one that has ARC and EARC on it that isn't like, you know, the highest end soundbar on the planet that most of us really don't use. We wanna use something like this and this one's got it built in. So I think it's a great product. Anyway, that's all I had for today. So hopefully you found this review helpful. I've been using this at the house. I like it an awful lot. I think you're going to like it too. So thanks again for watching. And as always, until next time, <laughs> stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.